Hey guys, we have a couple topics to talk about today. The first one will be the five spheres of Earth. We'll talk about what they are and how they interact as a system. We'll also talk about the general structure of the Earth. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Here are the five spheres. We have the atmosphere, biosphere, anthrosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere. Now it's important to take a pause here and say that you should be taking notes. If you missed anything, feel free to go back, go at your own pace, write down any questions that you have and bring them into class tomorrow for clarification. So here we go. Let's go ahead and talk about the atmosphere. As you can't see it, let's zoom in on this portion right here. And it's that thin blue haze that starts at the Earth and fades out into space. Let's talk about uh, a little bit about why it's important. First of all, here's what it is. It's a thin bl a blanket of gases that surrounds our planet, and there's really three reasons why it's important. First of all, it supports all life on the planet. It also provides protection for us from the sun and things that would otherwise hit the planet. Lastly, it's a source of energy transfer for our planet. It helps keep us warm and cool. The next sphere is the hydrosphere. This has anything to do with water on the planet, anything to do with evaporation or precipitation. Uh, everything from the clouds to the oceans, rivers, streams, groundwater, rain, snow. Anything that has anything to do with water is all part of the hydrosphere. Water mean, hydro means water, so this is the sphere of, of water for our planet. Next we have the biosphere. Bio means anything living, so this is anything living that's interacting with one another, such as monkeys or ducks, or I think that's a duck, maybe that's a chicken. I don't, I don't, monkeys or chickens, and fish and flowers and turtles and I think fish and whales whatever these are anything living that has to do with and that interacts with the the earth that's the biosphere next we have the geosphere geosphere geo means rock so this is the sphere of rock this is simply the rocky surface or all the rocky parts of earth including its interior uh, next we have the anthrosphere uh, anthrosphere is the new, uh, the newest sphere of Earth. Uh, it's how we interact with the Earth. It's our culture. It's our buildings. It's how the things that we, how, it's all the things that we do and how they affect the Earth. That's the anthrosphere. This is basically the people. All right. So how are they a system? They're a system because they all function together. If you remove one, the whole system will break down and not function properly. For example, all living things on Earth, they rely on the atmosphere, they rely on the physical Earth, and they rely on water to survive. People, same thing. We need the other four to survive. So the whole point is that if you take out one part of the system, the rest of the system will break down and fail. Let's go ahead and talk about the Earth's layers. We're going to start at the outside and move to the inside. We're going to keep it basic here. We'll get into some more details later on in later units. First layer that we're going to talk about is the crust. This is the first layer of the outside, the outermost layer of Earth. A uh, really important note about it is that it contains all of our natural resources. Everything we farm, everything we mine, it all comes out of the crust. Next, it's, it's the most studied. It's the one that we know the most about, simply because we live on it. Um, we've actually never even dug down below the crust into the mantle, which is kind of a, uh, a question to put out there to think about, and we'll talk about it later. If we've never dug through the crust, how do we know about these other layers, like the mantle or the core? And let alone, how do we know the core is separated into two different layers, a liquid layer and a solid layer? We'll get into that a little bit later in class. Uh, but it's something to think about for now. Come in ready to discuss it. Another thing is that the crust is cold and brittle. Uh, what does that word brittle mean? All that means is that it'll break. It'll break before it bends. So it's kind of like a piece of glass. You drop a piece of glass and the whole thing will shatter before it bends unless you heat it up, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, it's, it has an average thickness of 35 kilometers and what that means is down here at the oceans it's thinner, 3 to 5 kilometers they say, and the continental crust is definitely thicker, anywhere from 10 to 70 kilometers, uh, thicker at the mountains, thinner in the deserts. Um, but the average, if you take it all, all considered together, the average thickness is 35 kilometers. So the ocean, oceanic crust is definitely thinner than the continental crust. And uh, the continental crust gets thicker at the mountains. Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. I'm just getting used to this new tablet here. So thicker at the mountains and thinner 
That's looking better at the oceans. There we go. Thicker at the mountains, thinner at the oceans. All right. Next, we'll talk about the mantle. This is the second layer down the, the layer right below the crust. Um, important note here is that uh, all the rocks here are volcanic. Uh, the average thickness here is about 2,900 kilometers, and it's cold and brittle uh, towards the top. And what I mean by that is right over here, right where the right where the crust meets the mantle, this very top portion right over here. This is still pretty cold and brittle. But as you go deeper into the earth, temperature is increased. So instead of it being brittle, they actually say it's plastic. And what that means is that it will bend before it breaks. So it's kind of like a heated piece of glass, where if you take a piece of glass, put it underneath a torch, it'll become what they call malleable, or able to bend before it breaks. And that's what plastic means, that it can bend before it breaks. But it Really important note here is that only happens as you go deeper into the mantle towards the core. Another thing is that it doesn't contain any of our common uh, uh, um, natural resources that we use. It doesn't contain any oil or gas. We don't use it for our farming or anything. So it doesn't have the natural resources. It's not as rich in natural resources as the crust. All right. Lastly, we have the core. The core is the center of the earth. Uh, it's the biggest layer combined. Um, yeah, it is broken into two parts, the outer core and the inner core. Um, but combined, they are the thickest layer, 3,500 kilometers. Uh, made of metal instead of rocks, iron and nickel. We'll talk about that later when we talk about density and minerals. Um, and as I mentioned a minute ago, it's broken up into an outer part and an inner part. And something to note here is that that outer part is dominantly liquid or it could, it's, it's uh, fluid, it's able to flow. And that inner part is solid. Now that's a little weird. Why is it that uh, the outside would be liquid or have the ability to flow and the inside would be solid? I mean, you would think that maybe as temperatures increases that metal would melt and then it would be able to flow around. Why is it that this would get solid? So I want you to kind of think about that question uh, um, and for, we'll save that for tomorrow. So why is it solid? Yeah, you know, why is the uh, why is the inner core solid, and this guy here is a liquid? Hey, that's looking a little better. So why liquid? And well, I think I spoke too soon. That's a horrible question mark. And there we go. That's better. So why is it that uh, the inner core is solid and the outer core is liquid? All right. The last thing to talk about is how big is this thing? If you were to dig from the crust all the way on down from the crust all the way on down to the core, how far would you go? You'd go about 4,000 miles thereabout, and that's the distance from way over here in Nova Scotia, uh, which is on the eastern part of Canada, Canada, to uh, San Francisco, all the way here on the western part of the United States. So it's about as big as North America. Uh, North America is wide. Uh, kind of surprising when I first learned this, uh, I thought it was actually much bigger. Um, but I guess if you've ever driven that distance, you know it, it, uh, it is pretty far. All right, so in this lecture, we talked about the five spheres of Earth and what they are and how they act as a system. We've also talked about the general structure of Earth. We talked about the crust and the mantle and the core, and we asked a couple of questions about that. Uh, about each layer. Uh, so again, if you missed any of this video, please feel free to go back, take really good notes. I go really fast. Feel free to, to slow it down and, and come into class tomorrow with any questions that you may have about the video. Thanks.